Hainsbury, what I am now calling the supernatural cesspool of New England. I mean, supernatural according to the people who live here, and now the highest profile one of them has somehow roped me into babysitting. <laughs> okay, if I'm being honest with myself, I really have no idea what you'd even call these people. <laughs> here we are, with nothing but some questionable gear from a certified psycho, whatever skills we were born with, and the unfathomable belief that we actually have a snowball's chance in hell of doing this without causing any damage, physical or psychological. And I mean, that is all we have. <clears throat> You'd think a crazy rich guy like Martin would have a car or van or something that we could drive into town. We're doing him a favor here. Why should we have to walk? You know, it's not like all we've been doing around the estate this whole time was planning for this. We have lives. Besides, how were we supposed to know how long it'd take for at least some of you to do something so outrageous we'd have an excuse to have you over? As far as preparedness is concerned, we got ridiculously lucky that fate or coincidence or whatever you want to call it brought you all together at once. Less work for us. I don't know what I'd call it. I think Frank calls it narrative causality. How that makes sense, I have no clue. Maybe call it that? Are we going to spend all day having a philosophy lecture, or are we going to do some treasure hunting? Because I have to duck out this afternoon to pick up my... I mean, I have this appointment. I... I just have somewhere to be. So if we could hurry this up, that'd be great. Looking at you, Mr. Carlton, designated leader... Think you could look at the map and tell us where we should go? If you'd give me a second to open this thing. Um. <clears throat> okay, to be totally honest with you guys, I looked at this map for hours last night, and all I could say is that there's an obvious reason no one's been able to find this treasure for decades. This thing's written in gibberish. What? Let me see. I'm telling you, I studied a bunch of languages in college, and this looks like none of them. Look, the pictures are easy to read, but instead of actually marking where the dang entrance is, the path fades out halfway across town. And all there is is a message written in God knows what language. Here, let me look at it. Like with almost everything else, I am a fast reader. Fast at reading doesn't mean fast at thinking. You could read that thing 50 times in a second and you'd still have no clue what it was saying. Psh. I bet it's not that tough. Yeah, I have zero clue. Anyone else want to try? Or should we just give up now? I think the doctor might be able to read it. Wait, what? I can hear you translating it in your head. B but I mean, I suppose you could say that I'm hypothetically, um, that is assuming what it could say, but um, what I mean is, that is not to say that I don't not fully understand. Um, did you really hear that? Yes. Okay, something's telling me the mind-reading thing is going to get real old real fast. Think you can turn it down a notch? That is a much more difficult task than you may realize, Carlton. I'd call it useful at this point. It got the doc to admit he can read the thing. So... Right. Want to take a look there, kid? Um, oh, all right. Uh, I'm going to write I think it's been a while since I've done this. Um, uh, well... Old Welsh. I'd put it at about 900 CE. So what? The dangerous criminal knew about dead languages? Possibly. It would have been slightly less dead then. Perhaps it was his own sort of code. It certainly seems enigmatic enough, even when translated. So what does it say? It says, look for the tree that bleeds within and without. I've never heard of any tree that bleeds. Not in New England, anyway. Well, I doubt that it's meant to be taken literally. It's likely a riddle. Oh, a riddle! Let me do what I love, riddle! Hmm. Uh, Ginny. Shush. If I couldn't get it, I doubt she'll be able to. It's a red maple! Say what now? Yeah, it's red on the outside, like blood, and it bleeds sap inside. It couldn't really be that simple, could it? I think it could. I saw a huge one of those yesterday. I just wish I didn't see where I saw it. Why? Was it dangerous? No, no, but 
It sure as hell was weird. Well then, looks like a perfect job for the insane brigade. Apparently, we specialize in weird. Um, okay then. Let's go dig up some mysterious hidden treasure. Ah, it's you. The fresh meat. <laughs> it's still a no on the legal stuff for my parking lot. The tremors are gone now anyway, so I guess whatever it was moved across town. That's Hainsbury for you. Always keeps you guessing. Uh, actually, I was he- uh, we were here to talk to you about something else. Looks like whoever set that fire really did some damage. Nate, remind me to get their number when all this is over. It could be nice to have some competent help on my plans for once. You know, I'm not an idiot. I have a master's degree. In art history. Still counts. Ugh, you were just... How about we just keep quiet and get what we need to find the damn treasure, okay? Okay. Where exactly is the special treasure-finding... thing? Should be... in... there. What? The library? Does this mean we get to... Uh, oh, I, I don't know. Do some quiet research? No criminal activity at all? Um, sure. Whatever you want to hear. Oh, that doesn't sound promising. Ugh, locked. Really? In the middle of the day? Aren't these dumb places supposed to be open almost all the time? That's weird. The front door's all boarded up. And there's a note on the door. What? Due to an unforeseen incident leading to the destruction of our front window, the library will be closed until tomorrow morning in order to assess the damages? We hope that you will pardon us for the inconvenience. Thank you for your patience. Sincerely, Dr. Elliot Quaid, volunteer assistant to the library. What a load of... <sighs> All right, I guess we're going with plan B. We had a plan B? We do now. If one window is already broken, would it really hurt them to lose another? I'm going to go with yes. And you did that. Great. Well, are you coming? Through the window full of glass shards? Yeah. I guess I am. Good. Now hurry up. We're burning daylight. Oh, my. Hey, what are you people doing? <gasps> Did you break another window? Uh, 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 hi. You must be the librarian. I am, and we're closed. Now I suggest you two get out of here before I call the police and have you arrested for trespassing and property damage. Got it! We are out of here! Thank you so much for your leniency and... Get down on the ground before I decide where to send this extra bullet I happen to be carrying around. Quick spoiler, it'll be through your skull! You brought a gun? Dad, do you think I'd go into an operation without a gun? Did you keep up with anything I taught you while I was in prison? No! Wait, let's hold on for a second. I can help you if you put the gun down and... I thought I told you to get down! I am really sorry about this. She's been locked up for a while, and I think she has some stuff she's never got to work out in there, and... Shut up, Nate. Okay. Now look, we're just looking for an old picture. Got any photos of this town from the 1800s? Yes. Where? the back room by the stairs thank you nate watch her while i get the thing here catch wait don't throw me the gu ah! i'll be back in five minutes make sure she doesn't move but um how's the window fixing going <laughs> yeah that's fair I really hope this is the last time anyone gets between her and this treasure. I don't think she's going to be so nice the next time around. N now 
Now, wait a minute. You said you want to dig up the land my shop is on? Well, if only by that large tree round back. If you wouldn't mind, we'd hate to impose. Plus, it's for a good cause. We're only trying to help make the town better, starting with this and hopefully moving on to tackling some of the area's bigger supernatural problems. Really? About time we got people to take care of that. And you're working with them, newbie? Uh, I'm, uh, actually kind of their leader. Maybe. I'm still on the fence about the whole thing. Okay, whatever you say. So what do you call yourselves anyway? So I can talk to the wife before I let some strangers go stomping through the property. Uh, we haven't really discussed that part yet. I kind of like the insane brigade. I think it has to be something that explains what we do. You know, nothing too cryptic. What exactly do we do? I mean, we investigate, so maybe something with investigation in it. I think if we, if you guys want this town to take you seriously, you need something short and simple. No gimmicks. But it wouldn't be clear enough. Trust me, I'm a lawyer. I've spent way too much time trying to figure out how people think, and I know they'll listen to you if you don't call yourself something convoluted. But we don't just look into any old stuff. We investigate the stuff that everyone else in this place is too freaked out to touch. Stuff that's not scary, but, uh, maybe creepy, weird, disturbing. Heinous? Oh, I like that. That's it, sir. We're heinous investigation. Wait, that name's not really a good... I, I mean, it doesn't make you sound like you know what you're doing. But we kind of don't know what we're doing. Yeah, but you're not supposed to let them know that. Ginny, what Carlton's trying to say is it kind of makes it sound like the way we investigate is heinous instead of what we investigate. It might give off the wrong message. Oh! Exactly, so we should probably take it back before it... Hey, Paula! Heinous Investigations is here to dig up something behind the shop! Who? Oh my god. They're some kind of private investigators of heinous stuff. Or they're heinous when they investigate. They probably should have gone for a clearer name. Wait, that's what we're trying to... Oh, about time we got one of those around here. I should send one of those uh, social media DMs to all the neighbors so they know. Wait, before you do that... Sent it! Okay, then. Heinous investigations at your service. Sir, so, can we dig back there or not? Oh yeah, sure. Lots already busted up. Might as well have the stern match the bow, am I right? Great. Thanks. Oh, let's go, team. I'm gonna be honest. I did not think we'd be doing this again so soon. <laughs> Neither did I, but we can ditch the cops real easily this time, now that we have this photo. <laughs> yeah, uh, about that. Why exactly do we need to find the treasure? Don't you usually need maps for that kind of thing? <sighs> not when your great-great-grandfather was the partner of the guy who buried the thing and arranged to take a picture once it was all covered up. After he double-crossed his partner, obviously. Great. Now I know our family's messed-up morals go way further back than I thought. Who cares? The point is, all we gotta do is find where they took the picture. The only thing in it is a tree! There are thousands of them here! Shouldn't be too hard, and once we find the damn thing, we dig, disappear into the underground tunnel, no, and then the treasure mess. will be ours? What the hell? Oh, look! Somebody got here first! And they have a map? Why the hell do they get a map? I thought you said we didn't need a- Not the point, Nate. What is the point? The point is, now we have to deal with these stupid, no good... Suckers who are gonna do all of our digging work for us. Looks like we just caught another lucky break. But aren't they still in our way? Not for long. Part of being a good career criminal, Nate, is knowing when to sit back and let things play out. We'll deal with this slight inconvenience later. 
For now, let's just stay out of sight until an opportunity presents itself. This tree looks like a good hiding spot. Good view of what those dopes are doing. Nate, are you coming? Uh, yeah, I'm really tired from all the running. So maybe climbing a tree isn't the best thing for me right- Nate, get up in the tree. Yes, ma'am. You know, Algy, you could help us dig. Yeah, fastest man alive. At your speed, shouldn't you be able to knock this out in a couple minutes all by yourself? Yeah, here's the thing. Uh, these lead shoes the mad scientist gave me have been killing my feet, and um, I just don't think I have it in me to do any digging right now. But you guys are doing great. Oh, come on. You really think any of us are gullible enough to fall- Oh, you're injured? Allow me to um, help you then. There you go. Right as rain, I hope. Neat trick? They teach you that in medical school? Oh, um, <laughs> yes, that's very... <laughs> you are funny. Ooh, that is tough to watch. Well, Algy, guess you're good to go now. Feel free to grab a shovel. Ugh, fine. But it's probably going to take hours before we even get close to... Huh. I think I just hit something. Does that mean... Haha, <laughs> yup. That map wasn't some made-up load of junk. That's a secret door. How do you like that? Barely had to do anything before I found the entrance. You're welcome. You know, you're going to have a real rough time on this team if you don't learn to keep your mouth shut. What? At least I did something. <sighs> Let's just get this over with. Yeah. Way ahead of you. <laughs> <sighs> oh, wow, that is deep and dark. What, you scared? No, I'm just... Surprised at how much free time this guy must have had on his hands. Okay, then what now, fearless leader? I'm gonna take a look down there. You guys stay up here till I give the all clear. And if you don't give the all clear? Try not to think about that possibility. I'd hate to think of you crying over me. <laughs> oh, you wish. You know what? I hope you die down there. Sure you do. Shut up and get in the tunnel. All right, all right, I'm going down. Jeez. How does it look down there? Uh, not sure. Hold on. Let me turn on a light. Oh. What? Hey, Cryer, does that map happen to say anything about the tunnel splitting up into three smaller tunnels? No. Is that a problem? No! I thought you would want to hear about pointless hypotheticals about tunnels. You don't have to be a smartass. So what's your plan? I don't really think this team's in the right place to start splitting up. That barely goes right when competent people try it. Well, <clears throat> since some people want to get out of here as fast as possible, I'd say splitting up's the best option we have. Pretty sure there are radios in that massive pile of junk Frankenstein gave us. We'll reach out to each other if we see something. Or if something goes wrong. Nothing's gonna go wrong. Vampire guy, uh, 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 Ginny, you stay here and guard the entrance. Make sure nobody comes in after us. How do I do that? I don't know. Uh, punch anyone who gets too close? I know from experience you can hit pretty hard. Okay. And uh, you, creepy guy. Orville, please don't call me creepy. You go down the first tunnel we hit, and, uh, take the Bash brothers with you so they have somebody to keep them from killing each other. Are you telling me you don't remember our names? I do, it's just, it's been a long couple of days. I think our leader may be losing it. I'm not losing it, no. <laughs> I'm just having a totally normal reaction to dragging a group of people I barely know into what could possibly be their final resting place. <laughs> could have fooled me. 
Pryor, why don't you cut the commentary and go with Liza down the second tunnel? Why do they get real names? And I'll go down with... Wait, who's left? <clears throat> Hello. Oh, the kid. Great. Just great. <laughs> Nicely done, Carlton. My totally competent partner and I are just going to follow your orders and head on down now. Have fun fighting off uncertain danger with the scrawny nerd. Great leadership. Let's go, Liza. Right behind you. And we'll be right behind you. This seems like a nice view. Until Merriam takes your eye out with a dart from over 20 feet away. Still leaves one eye free, bro. Ugh. Okay, kid. Let's, uh, get a move on. Um, Mr. Carlton, if you'd really be more satisfied on your own, I wouldn't mind staying here with Miss Kelly. I'm certain that if any unsavory characters do cross her path, they may require some medical attention. No, kid, it's it's fine. I'd uh, <laughs> like to see Pryor's face when she twists an ankle or something and realizes she doesn't have the doctor there to take care of her. Something tells me that Miss Pryor is strong enough not to be thwarted by something as trivial as a twisted ankle, but if the idea makes you feel better... Just trying to make the best of the situation, kid. By envisioning another person in pain and distress. Yes, I, I mean... That's not exactly what I... I wouldn't... Ugh. You know, you're way too good at being nice. Years of practice. What? Nothing. Um, shall we? Uh, sure, kid. <laughs> Can't let the rest of the group get too far ahead of us. Radio us if anything looks suspicious out here, Jenny. Yes, sir. I will be the best look out ever. You can count on me. I come from a long line of powerful and diligent vampires who are always prepared to show no mercy. Hello. Hi. Didn't see you there. Oh, well, that's no problem. You know how you could make up for it? Let me and my little brother go through that door right there. Yeah, I can't do that. And why exactly is that? Um, reason. Okay, girly. You see, my great-great-great-grandfather went through a lot of double-crossing and thievery to hoard that treasure for himself. You know about the treasure? Yeah, because it was my family's. I mean, as much as being no good makes something yours, which is very. And since everyone in my family was either too dumb or too dead to ever find the thing, that makes it mine now. You mean ours now, right? Yeah, right, ours. So clearly, you can let us pass, hmm? Yeah, sorry. It's still a no. Okay, try the easy way. Time for the fun way. Oh, okay. I don't want to fight you, so if you wouldn't mind lowering the weapon and going home, that'd be nice. <laughs> you think you actually have a shot at beating me in a fight? I faced off against prison guards, cops twice my size, I once went up against a crime boss with more murders under his belt than years I've been alive, and I broke his fingers. I dare you to fight me. Okay. You can have the first shot. Ugh. You know, instead of worrying about booby traps, we probably should have considered how dark, wet, and dusty these tunnels would be. This is nothing. Try cleaning up after a... What? Just trust me. There are things way more disgusting than this. Can I ask you something? What? I guess I just want to know, how did you end up living in that house with Martin and the mad scientist? Because compared to them, you seem, you know, normal. I mean, besides the whole mist magic thing. To be honest, it was just a lucky break. Living in all that insanity was lucky. What kind of life were you living? Not a great one. You could probably guess that when you have a talent like mine, nobody really wants to deal with you. You know, people are scared of what they don't know. <sighs> you don't have to tell me. The point is... I mean, what I'm trying to say... Sorry, I haven't had to do this in a while. I'm trying to find a nice way to say that I was left out on the doorstep of social services as a baby. 
but I feel like a lot of people around here think that only happens in movies or TV. Oh. And I thought I had it bad. Why? What happened to you? We can talk about it later. Finish your thing. There's not a lot left to say. No matter where I got sent, there wasn't a lot of money. You know, too many kids in the system, things get tight. And I wasn't getting adopted because, you know, and I didn't want to see anybody starving or anything, so I used my skills to do what I could to get money. What did you do? Everything I could think of. I mean, being able to mess around with the biology of pretty much any living thing gives you a lot of range. I'd go out at night and sell pain relievers, fertilizers for plants, stress reducers. There was this black market set up in a warehouse about an hour outside of town where people were willing to pay anything for what I had. And you'd bring whatever money you made back to the foster home. Uh Uh-huh. And I'm guessing a certain eccentric billionaire and family were out to buy some of your stuff one night. Um, no, they definitely weren't. Okay, they were there, but they were not buying what I was selling that night. (sighs) Why is that? Um, well, I'd figured out by then that the stuff that sold the best for my stock was... It, uh... Sold really well with older folks who were looking for some excitement in the carnal department. Oh my god, were you selling stuff that made people- Hey, there's nothing wrong with supporting people's interests. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do, even if you're a little embarrassed to do it. Anyway, it didn't matter. Mr. and Mrs. Hendrickson were more interested in me than what I was selling. We had a really nice conversation, they were impressed by my skills, introduced me to Martin, asked me to move in, and, uh, the rest is history. Weird history. I know, but I can't say it didn't prepare me for all this. Look out! You okay? Yeah, thanks. Guess we found the booby trap. Guess so. What? You look upset, like you're disappointed. Wait, did you want a more dangerous trap? Kind of. I mean, come on. A big mallet? That was it? Seems more like something from a bad cartoon than a real trap. Oh well. Guess the old highwayman didn't have much of an imagination. Honestly? I guess I'm pretty disappointed too. But hey, if you look at the bright side, at least that means the guys are better off. I'm just saying you could have had my back over the giant spike pit. I grabbed you before you hit the bottom. Yeah, when I was barely an inch away from it. You're the one with the crazy shape-shifting powers. Couldn't you have extended your reach a little faster? Tripwire. Where? Ah! Arrows! It shoots arrows! Ah! Telekinesis! Forgot about that. Like how you forgot about the possibility a tunnel would be a guaranteed fire trap? I have no clue how that gunpowder even ignited. Isn't this place like a million years old? Trapdoor. Huh? Ah! Should I catch him again, or... I've got it. How am I still falling? We're already underground! (sighs) Orville, you have no idea how happy I am you're here! Since Carlton was right about the possibility of you two getting each other killed... I guess I'm happy I'm here, too. We were not responsible for all of those almost deaths. That was all the traps, which should have been deactivated simply due to old age. Yeah, but the arguing didn't help. Maybe we can discuss it after we get out of here. Good idea. But let's try to be careful from now. Orville? Are you okay? Jack? Oh, man. I should go get help. Yeah, I'll run and get help. I can get out of here in two seconds. Ow. I think I see a light up ahead. If we're lucky, the treasure will be close by. Yes. I can't wait to see the look in that smug suit's face when we get there first. Why are you two so obsessed without doing each other? Yeah, Carlton's a little stiff and maybe even a little bit of a jerk, but I don't get why you hate him. 
Or why he doesn't like you. I don't hate him. Are you sure? Because you aren't exactly nice to him. Look, it's not just about him. I don't like his type, that's all. What type? You know, self-righteous, snarky, wildly opinionated, all business. Right, because that doesn't sound like anyone else you might know. What are you saying? I'm saying that you guys are actually really similar. That's why I don't get why you hate each other. I thought birds of a feather flock together. I guess it turns out they don't. Do you have anything else you want to tell me about my relationships? No, but I'd like to talk about the fact that there are only two of us, but I can see three shadows on that wall over there. Shoot. Whoever's in here better quit while they're ahead, because I'm a darn good shot and I have a... What the hell is this thing called again? One-person arsenal. Right. A one-person arsenal, and I'm dying to use it. Oh, crap. What's going on? It's stuck. It's stuck? What? Am I speaking old Welsh? Yes, it's stuck. <clears throat> hey, kid. Um, you still mean me. To be candid, you don't appear to be more than 30 years old. So then why would you call me? I don't know. Just a habit, I guess. I was keeping an eye on people younger than me most of my life. And I still got five years on you. Or at least I quote-unquote technically do. Oh? I mean, uh, what are you implying? What I'm implying is, yesterday when you were making a total idiot of yourself in front of that girl... I don't recall doing anything that humiliating, but I... What I want to know is, you told her you were technically 23 years old. And, um, what exactly is wrong with that? Well, you could have just told her you were 23. Why put the technically in front of it? Um, I don't know. Unusual faux pas on my part, I suppose. Oh, would you look at that! We seem to be falling behind. Wouldn't want to keep the rest of the group waiting. Kid, you also have multiple medical degrees, can read a language that hasn't been around for hundreds of years, and have freaky healing powers. You're really not going to dodge my suspicion here. All right. Well, suppose then that I told you that the reason for those capabilities you just mentioned was that I was actually an otherworldly entity and that I am much older than I look. How much older are we talking? Um, give or take 1,150 years. What? <laughs> Would you mind possibly keeping quiet? I am not sure how thin these tunnels are, and I would greatly appreciate it if no one else from our party heard about this. Why? I'd, um, rather not say. Yeah, well, I guess that explains the number of degrees. Only somebody with an insane amount of time on their hands would be dumb enough to go through college that many times. It was actually more out of necessity. Knowledge matters on degree requirements change accordingly. I will admit this wasn't the immediate reaction I had expected from you at this juncture. What the hell are you to be alive this long, kid? Well, well, you're not really a kid, are you? But you can't blame me for thinking that. You don't exactly look your age, do you? That was what I was expecting. And I'm afraid that it might require a somewhat lengthy explanation. You see, um, for every, I'd say, 50 years that I'm alive, I only appear to physically age about one year and... Yeah, but why? How about you answer that question? Well, it's really just a matter of genealogy, considering that I was born of... That is to say, I have a parent who is, well, an angel. Wait, you're an angel? So is this like a situation where you're supposed to protect the town from evil or something? Because if I'm going to be honest with you, kid, you look like a light breeze can knock you over. <laughs> and I don't think that'll send infernal enemies the best message. No, I'm not... An angel. I was just, how do I put this, begotten by one? Can angels even have kids? Not exactly, but... <laughs> this probably would have been some useful exposition back when we were all talking in that library. <laughs> Please excuse me. There's your reason for why I am in the heat to discuss this with anyone. Well, describing my parentage, well, 
Uh, well? Well, it is common knowledge that in many cases, to be born, one typically has to have two parents, and um, my other parent is something else. What do you mean, something else? Kid? Where'd you go? Hello? Who's there? Show yourself! Ooh. Heinous Investigations was created, written, and directed by Jessica Castro, featuring the voices of David Manielli, Elena Garcia, Bryce Riffle, Tuan Nguyen, D.G. Holstein, A.J. Somerville, Naomi Park, Maria Elizabeth Burns, Jamie Forney, Emily Folger, and Jessica Castro. Sound design, editing, and mixing by Finn Nilsson, Owen Thornton, and Lucas Urbina. Additional audio editing by Tyson Charles. Heinous Investigations spooky theme song written and arranged by Jordan Castro with instrumentals by Lucas Urbina. Promotional media editing by Tom Velick. Have questions for us about this podcast? Feel free to follow us on Instagram at wildly underscore productions, Tumblr at wildly productions, Twitter at wildly product one, and Facebook at Wildly Productions and shoot us a message on our latest post. Or subscribe to Wildly Productions on YouTube and comment on our latest episode. And most importantly, don't forget to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash wildlypods for all kinds of fun bonus content and the chance to help us keep this podcast train rolling. Happy investigating! Happy investigating!